All right, James chapter 4, please. I, when I was, a long time ago, I wrote this statement down. It says, either you or the God you serve is defeated. Which one is it? And uh, my, my, my God is not a God that is ever defeated. Amen? And, uh, you know, sometimes we all fail. Every one of us fail. But I want to talk to you this morning. Um, I was going to preach a, a message on sure ways to kill your church, but I'm not going to do that. I was going to preach a message entitled, um, They Continued, But Not Everybody's Here. Um, and, and, uh, but I want to preach a message, kind of, it's going to be a preamble and, uh, to, to the message, They Continued. The sermon the title this morning is, So Little Time. So Little Time. There's not much time left. If you read the book of Revelation and, and, uh, and, and you look what the news is going on, um, man, it, it's, it, it's getting, it's getting uh, close to, to, to together, this, uh, uh, close to matching. This morning my, I, on, uh, I was on, um, what's it called, uh, 680 News, and, I, and I, um, I, I gave some news stories to my wife and, I, you know, a child, of, uh, a child dead and up to 100 homeless a uh, ten-year-old boy dead, up to hundreds homeless. Uh, uh, there's uh, 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 fourteen uh, 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 suspects arrest a fourteen-year-old uh, in a Brampton Park sexual assault um, shooting, a deadly shooting in Vaughan. Uh, the shooting in um, Moncton, New Brunswick. Uh, the the you know, and my wife said, you know, is there any good news? Is there any good news? And uh, oftentimes we, we, don't, we don't see good news because we don't look for good news. But there's not a lot of good news out in the world. There, there really isn't. And, uh, but so little time. We don't have much time left on this earth. Christ could even come back this afternoon. He could. He theoretically could. James chapter 4, please. Uh, James chapter 4. And we're going to read just one verse tonight or this morning. So little time. James chapter 4, verse 14. Are you there? If you're there, let's all stand. When you got it, James 4, verse 14. Whereas ye know not shall be on the morrow, for what is your life? It is even a vapor that appeareth for a little time and then vanish away. Uh, many years ago, there was somebody was asked that was dying of cancer. If you had one day to left to live, if God told you you have one more day left to live, this was the last day on this earth. What would you want to do? Where would you want to go? Let me ask you that question. If today was your final day, what would you want to do? What would you want to eat? What would you want to? Uh, where would you? Who would you want to talk to? Um, because today could be our last day. Uh, we could, uh, you know, your brother uh, spent all day in bed, probably should have called the ambulance several hours earlier, but chose, well, oops, not to. And, and, and you know, us, us guys, we get stupid from now and time and time again, and we don't think we need a doctor. But this morning I want to talk to you about that the fact that we have so little time, but there's so much work to be done. Amen. There's so much work to be done, and, 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 you know, yesterday we went out soul winning and knocking on doors, and, I, you know, every week it seems that there's, there's 10 and 15 and 100 and 200 groups all over this, this province of, of the fact that, of, of these, these Mormons and Muslims and, and, and all these other religions, these Jehovah Witnesses, and uh, they go out door knocking, and they make it a priority. Uh, the election is, is Thursday. Our provincial election is Thursday. And, you know, you ask any, you ask any um, uh, candidate, there's so little time. There's not much time left. And, folks, listen to me. God, we, we, the, there is so little time. You know, the Bible talks about floods in diverse places. We've seen floods in diverse places. Where was it that we saw the flood on the news? Um, 
New Guinea or something like that. It was an odd place. It was just, it was, it was odd. People died. Uh, uh, wars and rumors of wars. There's war in now in in rush between Russia and Ukraine. Uh, there's, there's, man, there's just, there's just, there's, uh, the world seems to be coming to an end. And oh Lord, come quickly. However, but there, there is some stuff to do. If, if this was your last day on earth, what would you make time for? Since we are, not, we are not guaranteed tomorrow, we ought to live today, every day, like it's our last day. What would you make time for? Oh, well, I would sure want to go to, uh, uh, I would want to go to uh, a steak, have a steak dinner and, and, and man, have all the fixings. And, or I would want to go to see the sunset on the beaches of Maui or whatever the case may be. What would you make time for? Well, let's, let's be honest. How many people are, got a plane ticket to Maui? None of us have a plane ticket to Maui. Uh, but we are, we, there are some things every day we ought to make time for. Because again, your life is but a vapor. You know, uh, our oldest person here is 60, 62? 62 years old. The earth is 7,000 years old. Your life is but a vapor. It's a very tiny, minuscule part of what this whole world is all about. Some people are being, the, that 10-year-old boy this morning, his life over just like that. Hannah's age, caught in a fire. Your life is but a vapor. Some things that we ought to make time for. And by the way, if we make time for these things, our days will be so much brighter and happier. And when things like computer problems go wrong, we just might be a little bit better off of, in dealing with it. Amen? Amen, Abigail? Number one, we ought to make time every day for God. God must be, uh, write these down, these are good points. We ought to make time for God every day. Because, my dear friends, God needs to be your most important part of the day. The most important person must be God. Amen? The most important uh, fellowship must be with God. See, God seems to get less and less attention as, we, as our days keep going, going and going and going. We ought to turn to God. Luke chapter 2, verse 7, let me flip to there. You don't need to, but you let me flip to there. Um, says here, And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. Folks, listen to me. Oftentimes, we don't have room for God in our ends of our lives. We, 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 we fail to... How many people read their Bible this morning? How many people prayed this morning? Now, how many people pray and read their Bible every morning before they go? Every morning, without fail. Never failed since the day you got saved. None of us have, can say that. We often sometimes fail. One of the, uh, and I believe, again, Luke chapter 2, verse 7, is the, one of the saddest verses in the Bible. And we often keep doing that. Uh, we need to have a daily time set to spend time with Him. It must be important. You know, you, you go to work and you have a set time uh, for, for, to go to work. You ought to have a set time to go spend time with the Lord. Every day, God must be an important person in our life. God must be, seek ye what? The kingdom of God. Seek ye last, third, fourth, whenever. Now, I'm not saying you ought to spend time with him first thing in the morning. You ought to spend God, hear ye the master's call, give him thy best. Not everybody's a morning person. I certainly am not a morning person. I am not. I'm not. Now, Sunday morning, I do spend time with him, but, you know, I, I, there's times I wake up in the morning and I try, I'm reading my Bible and I'm like, uh, uh. now you probably should read your Bible in the morning. I've been training myself to be a morning person. Once I get my first cup of coffee, I'm okay. Amen. Juan Valdez is, he, he sits with me every morning and, and, and actually now it's Honduras coffee, uh, Honduras 
uh, Guatemalan. Uh, man, it, it sits with me every day with my, in my Bible reading. And folks, listen to me. We ought to spend every day with God. Spend the best part of your day. The second thing we, we, ought, have, we should have in every day of our life is eternity. Number two reasons why number one. So number one is God. Number two is eternity. We ought to, number one, think of where we're going. How many people here are saved here today and, and glad that they're saved? Give me an amen. amen. Well, then remember where you're going. Amen. Remember where you're going and, and, and that, that, that death hath no sting over you. Remember what, uh, remember what Jesus did for you. Matthew 6, verse 19 to 21, it states the following. Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth where moth and rust doth corrupt uh, and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up your treasures in heaven not, where neither moth nor dust uh, nor, rust, nor, dust, nor rust doth corrupt and where thieves break in to steal. Uh, 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 break, break through, nor steal. For where your treasure is, there where your, it, there will your heart be also. Our hearts and our treasures need to be in the things of God. You know, uh, if you're a parent here, you you invest your kids in the work of the ministry. If you, if you're if you're a kid here, you invest your life in the work of the ministry. If you're not a parent, you're an older person or a middle-aged person, invest your life in the work of the ministry because you know there is no greater joy than seeing somebody be saved. There is no greater joy than investing in the work of the ministry. There is no greater joy than you seeing somebody get saved because you you decided to put, make eternity part of your life. Uh, not only should we every day should, should uh, uh, remember what God has done for us, we, every day we ought to spread, tell somebody for what God has done for us. Number, number three, we ought to make time for family. We ought to make time for family. Mom, make time for your kids and husband. Dad, make time for your wife and children. Children, make time for your parents par and, and your siblings. Make time. Your closest friends should be your parents, children. Your closest friends should be your parents, kids. And each other. Husband, your best friend should be your wife. Wife, your best friend should be your husband. Make time for your family. Because you know what? They could be gone. Just like that. You know, we ain't getting any younger. Your mom. I, you know, I, I, I bet you $10 to a donut. I, I don't bet. But I, 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 I think it's probably I'm correct to say Jim wishes he had another day with his mom. Amen, Jim? His mom just went downhill just very quickly and gone. And now is in eternity. My dear friends, and we ought to make time for our, our, our number one, our, our, our God, number two, eternity, number three, loved ones. We ought to invest, spend some time, watch a movie, play a game, go for a walk, pet the cat, whatever, laugh at the cat. You know, yesterday, one of the greatest things yesterday was when we were laughing at, at Rupert for what he did. He, 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 did he jump on the screen first and then on the ball or the ball first and then the screen? The screen first and then he, that big purple medicine ball or exercise ball we have, he jumped on the screen. I think he tried to go through the screen. And not, he had, a, he had a, 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 a blonde moment, so to speak. If cats can have a blonde, he had a dog moment, amen, because um, cats are smarter than dogs. Um, but he had, a, he had a dog moment, and he went, tried to go through, and then he bounced back off the screen and on the ball, and he fell off. We just, we, we were laughing hysterically. That was a, my most favorite time yesterday. And it just, it was funny. Didn't cost us a dime. Costs, you know, it, it costs nothing. You don't need to go spend money to have a good time with, with family. Amen? Thank you. Just as those three things I, 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 want to, I want to give you, I want to give you one thing we should never make time for. I want to give you one thing we should never, ever, 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 ever make time for. 
And that is the temptation of sin. We ought to stay away from the temptation of sin. If something bugs you, stay away from it. Someone bugs you, stay away from it. You know, sometimes, sometimes we ought to just, when Satan go, goes a calling, we ought to say, you know what, I'm too busy to talk to you. Sometimes when my wife will, uh, my, phone, my phone this morning has gotten four phone calls, and, and obviously I have not returned any of the phone calls. I've been too busy. Sometimes my wife, somebody will call the house and, and want to, to talk to me and my wife. I'll say to my wife, I, I'm just too busy right now. Can you take a message? Uh, or my daughters will say, you know, my dad is not available now. We ought to say to Satan every time he comes and knocking or every time he comes calling, we ought to say, Satan, I ain't available for you right now. And by the way, I'm never available for you. Amen? We are not to give, the Bible says don't give place to the devil. You know what that means? Hold on to that. Don't let the devil sit down and put his feet up. Don't let him sit with you. Don't let him pal around. How's it going, buddy? Don't let him be anywhere near you. Because, you know, the Bible, we, if we give place to him, he, he won't leave. You ever, had an unwa- you ever had a guest come and they kind of stayed a little too long and you wanted them to go? And, man, you're like, <sighs> and they never get the hint. Satan never gets the hint. Because once you, once you let him in, you're in trouble. My dear friends, this is not a long message this morning. It was probably, what, 20 minutes or so? But it's a message that we ought to really heed to. We ought to every day have a regiment of what we ought to, to take time for. See, and if we take those first three, what's the first one we ought to give time for? God. Number two, eternity. And number three, family. If we have those three balanced every day, guess what? Our day will be godly. Our day will be a a, a joy. There will be such a joy to be serving the Lord. And by the way, our job is to serve the Lord. Every day we ought to find a way to say, God, what do you want? What would you like me to do today? My Jesus, I love thee, I know thou art mine. For thee all the follies of sin I resign. My gracious Redeemer, my Savior, my friend. We ought, to, we ought to put God first in our lives. And when we don't, we, have, we get stupid. We do stupid things. How many people do stupid things? Raise your hand. How many people live in stupidity sometimes? Raise your hand. We all do. Amen. And we ought to just not live in stupidity. We ought to just learn that God is worth serving every day. He is. Aren't you glad when he was on the cross, he didn't say, just before he died, he says, okay, that's enough. I went off. Because if his heart didn't stop, and he wasn't buried, and he didn't spend three days in the grave for us, and he didn't rise again for us, where would we be going? We ought to take those three things. Spend time with the Lord. Because, by the way, and he needs to be first. And if you put him first in your life and you spend time with him first in your life, guess what? Everything else will fall into place. Second thing we ought to do is make sure we tell people about Christ. And by the way, rejoice in the fact you're saved. Then why do we walk around like a sour? I like lemon water. I, I, I don't like sucking on lemons. But we do. We do suck on, look like we sucked on lemons. We don't, we, there's no, the joy. Here, here's a song. The joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord. And you don't have, there's no joy. For the Spirit is love. 
What's the second one? Joy. And the third thing we must do is make time for family. Invest in them. You know what? Invest in your church family. See somebody not here? Invest in them. Write them a letter. Hey, we missed you on Sunday. Hope to see you out again soon. Sure love you. You know, we invested in, in, in one of our neighbors here that, who, came, who used to come out to church. She hadn't been coming out to church in a long time. We invested in her. It didn't cost us anything. It cost us maybe a couple tablespoons of, uh, t- tablespoons of gas. Wow. But the investment far outweighs the cost when you invest in eternity. It really does. So, so little time. What are you going to invest in today? What are you going to make time for today? You know, this afternoon you got a little bit of time. Uh, we're, and we're going to be out of here early. Wow. We are going to be out of here really early today. You got a little bit of time today. What are you going to make time for? Are you going to make time for the things of God? Or are you going to make time for the things of the world? You know, I say, well, I'm going to go home and maybe watch uh, sports this afternoon. That's okay. But seek ye first the kingdom of God. I'm not saying you should never watch sports. I'm not saying you should never watch good TV shows. There's not many out there, but I'm not saying you should do that. I'm not saying you shouldn't even make time for yourself. And by the way, I think you should make, have a me time every day. But those three things we ought to invest in. Make time. How many people like quiet time? We all do. So, but get the first three done first and then get the me time.